What's good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Just Be Wise. And I know I've been pushing for, well, gently pushing, just like a little tap, 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 tapping people in the direction of the Sony a7 II and talking about how amazing it is. And also talking about how not amazing the autofocus is. Now, this is kind of not helpful, especially since, you know, I keep telling people, yeah, you should get this camera and just leave them to deal with the autofocus on their own. So I thought, you know what, today, let's talk about autofocus. So the Sony a7 II uses a hybrid autofocus system where it uses face detection autofocus and contrast detection autofocus together. Now, I know what you're saying, wise. What the heck is face detection or wise? What the heck is contrast detection? Like what, what does that even mean? Check the link below and b &H did a very good video on the details of and all the science behind what is phase detection, what is contrast detection. That's not for me to talk about. I'm not no science guy, but I will give you the TLDR. Phase detection is a better system for uh, faster focus and better at capturing moving targets, whereas contrast detection is a little slower. However, it is more reliable and better for things like stills or stationary subjects. Okay, enough science talk. Let's go ahead, get practical, and talk about what focus modes you should use and when. Starting with wide. So the wide focus mode obviously captures a wide range of focus points, right? It, it's using all the focus points. Every last one of them is using them all, right? And it's usually good when you have more of a moving target. You don't know exactly where they're gonna be in frame. So if you're like filming your kid playing soccer, you don't know what that kid is gonna do. So you wanna just keep them in frame and the focus mode, since it's not restricted to any one place, can just go and track them down. You know, just, just like a parent, just tracking down your kids. Why did I use that as an example? Anyway, okay. But the thing that's not so great about this focus mode is just that. It's using all of it. So it can, at any point, focus on something you're not trying to focus on. For instance, if you want it to focus on my face and it decides to focus, oh, I started going this way. I want it to go this way. And it starts focusing on the stuff back here, like this chair or something back here. I, I can't, since we don't have touch screen, you can't really tell your camera, hey, focus right here. We do have something that we can kind of use like that, and I'll get to it a little bit later. Next up is the zone focus mode. Okay, so zone focus mode pretty much takes the wide focus mode and narrows it down into a few segments. So almost like you have a third of the screen that you can focus on. I don't know the exact math. I'm saying a third, it's probably a little less than a third, but you get it, you get what I'm saying, right? So with zone focus mode i like that that's probably my favorite focus mode usually when i'm shooting these videos other than this one right now i'm shooting a manual anyway so um zone focus mode i like the most because i already know roughly where i'm gonna be in frame right so and it works a lot if you're trying to restrict where you're gonna have your framing you want your subjects on the left third of the frame then you'll go ahead and put the zone in the left third of the frame and it will restrict the focus area to just that area focus area to just that area don't judge me that's that's what it's going to do and then what that does is eliminate all of the other areas from the autofocus working so like if you have your kids running around in the background as long as they don't run in front of you on that area that you've already designated for your focusing area then you don't have to worry about losing focus that way all right, so next up is center focus mode, which is, no, I'm not talking to you, Google. Get out of here. Next up is the center focus mode, which is obviously the most boring to talk about, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. It's obvious. It's in the center. Whatever is in the center of your frame will be in focus. That is that simple. It's super rare that I would use the center focus mode because I would either use zone and put it in the center, or I will use the thing that we're gonna talk about next, which is flexible spot, and I'll use the large one, which is about the same size as the center focus mode, and put that in the middle. So, and that gives you the flexibility, flexibility, flexibility to change where it's gonna go, and we're actually gonna talk about that right now. Okay, flexible spot 
focus mode. So this focus mode, I typically only use the large. I feel like the small, it, it just doesn't work. It's not enough um, focusing points to use the small, at least in my mind. It's very difficult for me to find focus when I'm using the small. Okay, so this focus mode is very similar to zone. However, it takes up less of the frame. So it should actually give you a more precise placement on what you want to keep in focus, right? And yes and no. And I say that because yes, because you can pick out the little section of whatever you want to keep in focus. However, if that subject is going to move or if you're going to move, you would have to keep that thing on them. And it's not so easy to move back and forth when you're trying to move the, the focus point around. Mostly because, like I said before, we don't have touch screen on this camera. So you have to use the dial to, you know, first you have to bring up the autofocus mode, then you have to use the dial to move it where you want, and then, you know, lock it in place again to move it again. And that's a little bit too much work. If it's gonna be in a general area, you might just wanna end up using zone. Okay, so just so that you guys all know, yes, zone is my favorite to use. So if you're out there, depending on how you're making your videos, I feel like zone is so versatile, it's probably the best to use, except if you're vlogging. If you're vlogging, you might wanna use the wide because you can't really see most of the time where you are in frame, so you may get out of the zone and you're not trying to. But if you generally are good with keeping yourself in a certain part of the frame and you're vlogging, then hey, maybe keep zone as well. But what I would say is, other than vlogging, I would use wide. Everything else, I would probably just use zone. Unless you're being, unless you're doing photography and you're doing very, very specific things, then I would use flex spot. So those are the, the things right there. Man, I can't talk. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the modes. But now I wanna give you a couple of tips to help you use the autofocus in this camera as well as you can. Now, I know the autofocus I've said a lot of times is not great. However, there are some things you can do to make the autofocus a little bit better. So I wanna give you about four different things you can do to make your autofocus experience with the Sony a7 II better. The most important thing with photography, videography, is lighting, right? That doesn't change here either. If you wanna have a better experience with autofocus, you need to have proper lighting. If you don't have proper lighting, it's gonna be hard for the camera to find the focus, especially when it's doing contrast detection and phase detection and all that stuff. We don't actually know the details too. Don't ask me the details on them. I told you to go in B and H. Let me, let me calm down. Okay, so the better the lighting condition, the better the autofocus will perform. Right now, I could turn on my autofocus. I'm not going to, but I could turn on my autofocus and I can kinda trust it because I know my lighting situation is good. For the most part, I usually would not have it on manual, but I'm shooting on the 50 mil again. You know, this is another video, shooting on the 50 mil in manual though, cause you know, better lenses for autofocus make a difference too. So next thing I would suggest is to have better contrast between your subject and the background. Now, what I mean by that is, I have darker skin. If I want the autofocus to work better, after adding proper lighting, I would have a lighter background because then it'll be easier for the camera to distinguish between me and the background. So if you can, now if your shoot or whatever doesn't, you don't have an opportunity to do that, then obviously you can't do that. But if you can add more contrast between your subject and the background, it's gonna help a lot between the autofocus being good and being bad. All right, so right now we're in the age of bokeh or bokeh or blurry background is what I'm saying. We're in the age of the blurry backgrounds, right? Even the phones, the phones don't shoot in blurry background and they make the computer pretty much Photoshop you out and Photoshop in a blurry background. That's crazy, right? That's how big blurry backgrounds are right now. The problem with that is the way you get the blurry background is to shoot at a lower aperture. The lower the aperture, the harder it is for the camera to focus. I don't know why. I don't know the science behind these things. We already discussed I don't know the science. Go to b and and ask them, right? However, I know it's true. So what you need to do is prioritize your focus 
over your bokeh. So if it's gonna be better for you to shoot at a little bit of a higher aperture and just bump up your ISO just, just, just a touch, then do that. So it helps your camera go ahead and lock in that focus. Now, if that's not an option, you can't add contrast and you don't have proper lighting, then you know what you need to do. Manual, that's tip number four. Don't be afraid to just go ahead and turn the dial on the manual, bro. You gotta learn how to shoot manual anyway, because sometimes what's gonna happen is all of those things can work out and it's still not gonna find focus. Even in the best cameras, people still shoot manual focus because you're the artist, you know what you want in focus, the camera doesn't. The camera's just a dumb tool that we use to do this thing. So make sure that sometimes you just take over and, and don't let the camera think for you, you think for the camera, okay? Don't be afraid to shoot in, fo in, in focus. Yeah, don't be afraid to shoot in focus. I meant in manual. Y'all know I'm crazy. Okay, so that's everything I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit a like. If you have any additional tips or tricks to add with hitting autofocus with the A7 II or with any camera actually, go ahead and add it to the comment section below. I wanna thank you guys for sticking around. And as always, I gave you some tools to create. Now be great, peace. Oh man, we we doing it. We doing it today.